Hi everyone, today I'm going to introduce you to the Fuumui travel brushes that the company graciously sent me. I'm going to test them out and then I will make a painting with them. The set comes with a brown faux leather pouch, which is really nice, and it includes four brushes. And because they are travel brushes, they have a cap, uh, which makes the brush be twice as short for convenience. And these actually unscrew, which is really nice because it means that they stay in place really well. The body's in metal and there's a hole at the end of the cap. So once you're done painting plein air, if your brush is still wet, you can still put the cap back on and the bristles will dry without getting moldy or anything. So you screw the cap at the end of the barrel and it just makes for a longer barrel because the cap turns into part of the barrel too. And uh, the actual barrel that's attached to the ferrule is in wood. It's a nice weight. It's a actually pretty long length for a uh, travel brush once it's put together. So like I said, there are four brushes, a flat brush, which is probably a quarter inch, a size eight, it says size eight, but I'm not sure, sword, and then two rounds, an eight and a four. So like with all new brushes, there is glue on the bristles to keep them in shape and prevent them from getting damaged. So I dip them all in water to dissolve the glue because it's the safest way to get rid of the glue without damaging the bristles. But it seems like there was a lot of glue on these brushes. So it took me a little while to get rid of it all. So I did some swatches with each brush to see how they are. They are actually very, very soft. And even though they are soft, you can actually draw very fine lines. They're quite pointy, but you have to be very careful because the bristles might just flatten if you put too much pressure on them and then you won't have a very fine line. I'm not quite sure what kind of hair they are. And even though they're pretty soft, I thought they might contain a lot of water, but they're not very thirsty, which I actually don't mind because to me it's easier to control that way. But that's just my own preference.
So once I was done with all the swatches, I decided to do a full painting. I used some Arsh watercolor paper. And for the paint, I used a variety of brands, a bunch of different ones that I have um, in a palette that I like. I did the painting of a plant. Um, I had drawn that plant before with Silver Point, but because I really liked the color from the reference picture, I've always wanted to paint it with watercolors as well. So this was my opportunity to do so. So I did the first layer with the round number four and um, it was really easy to handle. Even though I'm not used to using soft brushes, I was able to use it without any problems. The fact that it doesn't hold as much water as I expected made it easier to control. So I didn't really have any problem at all with uh, that first wash. I covered all the leaves with a mixture of um, cobalt teal and some uh, darker blue and a little bit of green as well depending on the variation of the colors that I saw in the reference photo. It was not quite a teal, just a teal. There were a few different colors. I used a burnt oxide for the pot and the wall that the, the plant is on and um, it was really actually satisfying to just color within the lines. Uh, very easy to do that with those brushes. And then I used the bigger uh, round number eight for the background. Um, I had to be very careful and pretty quick to make sure that the wash didn't dry as I was going down the page because I didn't want any marks. I wanted a very even background. But that larger brush held enough paint and so I didn't have any problem doing so. Then I added my second layer and for that I just used the exact same wash of uh, burnt oxide except a little stronger with less water to do the shadows under the plant on the pot under the plant and the shadow of the pot on the wall
I noticed that the leaves had some spots on them and they were a pretty rusty color. So I added that same burnt oxide where I saw those spots. I darken the top of the background a little bit to make it darker than the bottom. And then it was time to add my second layer to the leaves, uh, the shadows, to make those leaves look a bit more 3D. So I'm, to make that gray for the shadows, I mixed the blue and the burnt oxide together because there are opposite colors on the color wheel. So I knew it would make a nice grayish brown, which was perfect for the shadow color. And it would be complementary with the, the painting overall because it has that blue and it's complementary orange, which works very well, which looks very nice together. Once that layer of shadows was dry, I added a light wash of teal over the whole plant, even where I had left the white highlights, because those highlights on the leaves aren't actual uh, white, bright white. They're just a lighter teal color. That kind of tied everything together, the rusty spots and the shadows, it made it a little bit more cohesive. But after that, I still had to deepen the shadows to make the leaves pop a little bit more. But this time I made the new glaze a little less muddy. I just added some blue to the cobalt teal and it looked a lot fresher, not as muddy. But you still had the, the other shadows underneath, it still pops. One of my last steps, and it's something I often do when I paint in watercolor, is to use a scrubber brush and gently lighten the highlights. I didn't want the paper to turn back all the way to white, but I wanted a deeper contrast. So with my damp scrubber brush, I scrubbed around some of the petals. And then on the petals themselves, uh, in lighter areas, I kind of mushed the brush around a little bit, for lack of a better word, just to start the colors a bit, lift them off the paper without leaving um, a sharp line. And then I dabbed a paper towel over it to remove the pigments. Finally, with the rust color mixed with some blue, I added a few shadows on the edges of the leaves, which also helped with the contrast. 
And prior to that, I had uh, deep in the shadows in the lower right corner where the leaves are a lot more shaded than the top left. Now I forgot to mention that um, after the first couple of layers, I switched brushes. I used one that's not as soft because it's easier for me to use for details. I could not have done the details with the Fu Mui brushes because they're so soft, but they were great for glazing and they were great for larger surfaces. I think they would be really nice to use maybe for plein air, um, if you're doing a landscape for instance that's not super detailed, for a sky it would be fun. I think they're really nice brushes. I probably wouldn't use them alone for full painting unless I was gonna do something loose, but that's entirely because of my style and the kind of brushes I'm used to use. If I were to do something really loose, I probably would use them all the way through. So I'm very happy with the result and I'm very thankful for the opportunity to try those brushes. I had fun and enjoyed using them. If you're interested, I will put a link where you can find these brushes in the video description box. And thank you all for stopping by. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps this channel. If you're feeling extra generous, you can also support it by clicking on the thanks button right next to the share button. Have a wonderful day everyone. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye bye. Thank you.